Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'll be putting the front end back on the S10. Before I start putting some real miles on this thing, I want to make sure all of the lights are in place and working properly. So I figured, might as well go ahead and get the front end put back together so it at least looks like a truck once again. I'm also going to be installing one of my favorite OE accessories, front fog lights. Of course, a big thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for all of their support. If you guys are in need of some stuff, whether it be for general maintenance or something for a project, be sure to check out O'ReillyAuto.com and take advantage of the exclusive discount code SK04, which gets you 20% off of purchases of $100 or more. I put a link in the description box below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Getting all of this mostly put together off the truck is definitely going to make things easier with reinstallation. Once I get the fog lights and valence attached to the bumper, then the whole assembly can be put on the truck and I can work on attaching the impact strip. Speaking from experience, sometimes it can be kind of a pain in the butt to track down all brand new hardware, but it really is well worth it in the end because you've got all of this nice, clean stuff to work with and the end results will look factory fresh. Well, I've run into my first problem. A while back, I bought these brand new fog lights. They're not factory ones, they're depot, like aftermarket replacement lights. But as you can see, compared to the factory setup, they're not the same. The brackets are entirely different, and comparing the light housings, this one is upside down. I mean, it, this one doesn't work on this bumper. And I could have sworn I bought the right one for an S10, but I may not have. So. The housings are the same, this one's all rusted up and disgusting, so I'm going to take the housing off of this one, put it on this one, clean up the bracket, it'll work out nice, it's just one of those, like, oh man, I'm really glad I had these lying around, otherwise, you know, that wouldn't have worked out too well. Well, that fog light worked out quite nicely. I stripped down and repainted that factory bracket so everything fits exactly like it should. I swapped over the bucket from the aftermarket replacement. All of the hardware carried over, so now I'm going to show you how I did it on the other side. This is going to look so good, I can't wait to see him on the truck. Now for the new impact strip. I really should have put the impact strip on before I put the bumper on. I was thinking it was going to mount like a factory one, but it's an aftermarket and it's a little bit of a different style. Instead of just pushing it into the holes in the bumper, you've got the mounting studs that go all the way across and these spring clips that hold them in from the back. You're supposed to put this over the mounting stud against the spring clip and then tap it with a hammer 
to secure it in place, but I can't do that. I don't feel like taking the bumper back off. So I'm still using this to hold the spring clip at the back, but I'm tapping the front side with a rubber hammer, which isn't messing anything up. So I guess it worked out. Very nice. Now, before I can install the grill filler panel, I'm gonna go ahead and reroute the factory light harness so we can make sure everything works. got the grounds in place for this side, one in the frame, one in the core support. Now let's see if the lights come on. The driver's side ground is in place. For wiring the fog lights, I didn't want to do a custom setup. I wanted to try to replicate what they would have done from the factory, so for that I turned to my parts truck. The fog light harness is completely separate from everything else, so it's just a matter of tracing the harness back to the firewall. However, inside is where it gets tricky. Once the harness goes through the firewall, it goes up and behind the instrument cluster. There's the fog light harness relay and the switch all tied into the harness, and then you've got some wires coming down into the fuse box relay. So it's really hard to get back there without doing some creative massaging, so to speak. I was able to pull the entire harness totally intact to make this fog light upgrade on the other S10 a plug and play thing, which is phenomenal. I got the horns wired back up too. One's up here, one's down there. Interestingly enough, when I was doing the initial teardown of this truck, I noticed somebody had installed a pair of Ford horns. I guess the original ones broke and they just put something in to make do. There was also some kind of janky wiring in there, so I took the harness out of my parts truck, soldered everything back together, made new connections. Everything is in and working fantastic. This is the fog lamp switch that came out of the parts truck. I really wanted to use it, but I ended up having to use one that I got out of an S10 Blazer, which was basically the same principle. The wiring was a little bit different, so I had to figure out the connectors and solder them in place so I can plug it in just like factory. But the bummer about this is that while it looks in great shape on the outside, it's the inside that's messed up. So. There's little lights inside this switch to illuminate it at night and when the fog lights are on, those little lights mess up or melt the plastic rocker and pieces and stuff inside this switch so they become very brittle and break. This was already broken, it was pushed in. I took it all apart, the entire switch assembly down to its individual components and basically swapped all of the good parts with parts from a defrost switch, which is basically the same principle, just slightly different wiring. So I got it all in place and it still doesn't work. So I think something internally is still broken. I might take some more defrost switches if I can ever find some and see if I can get it to work. But I know I'm kind of going on and on about this, but I've seen some of these switches for sale on eBay for quite high of prices and I just wanted to let anybody know that's thinking about doing a project like this be aware it may look really nice on the outside but the damage could be more uh, you know severe on the inside and you wouldn't even be able to tell unless you really took the switch apart and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on this if it's already going to be uh, you know dead on arrival but anyway it's worked out I've got this spare switch that I can work on in my free time and if I can get it to work that would be really cool but I've got a factory solution already, so it's all good. Now let's get these headlamp buckets back in. The 
The camera just doesn't do it justice. This looks awesome. It's such a great feeling seeing all of this come back together. Now I'm going to work on fitting the grill filler panel. With all of the modifications I had to do to my core support to accommodate the radiator, polar fans, and AC condenser, I am going to have to modify the filler panel a little bit to get it to fit right, but it should work just fine. Well that worked out pretty good. I was able to attach the filler panel with four out of five bolts. I had to cut the hole off on this side. What I'll probably do when everything has to come back apart for uh, bodywork and paint later is just drill a hole through there, put a rib nut in the core support and attach it that way. But for now, it's good and sturdy. I've already installed brand new retaining clips across either side of the core support, so let's go ahead and fit the rest of the grill. And voila, we have a front end once again. Overall, I'm happy with how things came together. It looks pretty good. I will say though, I'm not super enthusiastic with how the grill came together. Just as to be expected, I suppose, all the aftermarket parts don't fit 100% like they would from the factory. I would like to keep an eye out for some new old stock parts. That's probably easier said than done, but there's probably some more adjustments in there that I need to fiddle with when it's time to do the cosmetics, but like I said, overall, I think it looks fantastic. The weird thing is, if you get an aftermarket replacement one-piece grill, if memory serves me correct, they all have the Chevrolet provision to where you can put the emblem in properly, but the egg crate grills from the earlier first-gen trucks, you either get them blank to where they have no provision for an emblem and just a straight bar down the middle or this blank spot. The factory grill would have had a Chevrolet logo like, you know, positioned in there to where the emblem would fit directly over it, but obviously that's not the case here. The chrome bezel also doesn't fit, so I'd have to put the lens here, obviously repainted of course. If I paint it black, it might look kind of stealthy because the chrome will be around it and it'll look like I did it on purpose, but <laughs> not 100% sure. Again, the drawbacks of trying to find or dealing with um, aftermarket stuff sometimes, but I'm not sure what I'll do. Do this, modify this, get a different grill. I don't know, there's options. Plenty of time to figure it out, but I'm super happy regardless. This thing is looking mean. Now let's flip the lights on. Now that's what I'm talking about. Super, super cool. That visor looks good too. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Man, those fog lights really set the truck off. Well, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like below. It really helps the video a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because I've got a lot of fun content coming, including stuff on the S10 and the 240SX, so you don't want to miss that. Double check, your notification bell is selected so you can get properly notified of all of the new uploads. Well, I'm hot, I'm tired, so I'm going to close up and get out of here. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.